Hi everyone, Phil from Statistics Mentor here. Today we're going to talk about logistic regression. Now, logistic regression is applicable when our dependent variable is not continuous or scale variable, but um, a binary variable, so it takes only one of two values. Let's look at an example here. We've got data from the Titanic. We've got the variable survived, which survived yes or no, so that's binary. We've got a dummy variable for gender, that's a female, it's coded zero if it's male, one if it's female. We've got age of each passenger, and then we've got like the class that that passenger uh, paid for, was traveling on. Okay, now, the dependent variable here is survival, yes or no, that's what we're interested in and the other ones, female, age and the classes, they are the IVs. Now let's have a look at the scatter plot of the DV, which survived, and age, which is continuous. Here you go. Now recall that for the usual type of regression we've seen, the standard regressions, our scatter plot doesn't look something strange as this. This has just got two horizontal lines. One at this is vertical axis is survive, that's my DV, and it's on a scale from zero to one, but look at the the dots, they're either one or zero. They are not like we're accustomed to seeing dots maybe like that, around here like that, so we can draw a straight line like through the dots or going down the other way, so we can draw a negative sloping line. Here you've got two horizontal lines, and which explains why the standard regression model it ain't so great anymore. Okay, So each of these dots represents a coordinate of age and whether they survived or not. So if I point to a dot over here, this dot here, that's saying that the age of that person was just short of 80 years old. Did they survive? Yes, because one here is coded for survived and zero is coded for not survive. Um, and so that's why we get two horizontal lines with nothing in between. Now if you think about drawing a straight line through these to uh, these these dots, then that's hard to imagine, isn't it? You could do that, or you might do that, or you might have a line going like that. It's very hard to say, isn't it? Okay. So now we could fit a standard regression model, but there are many disadvantages of doing that. There are more advantages of running something, a model that is specifically formulated to deal with cases where the dependent variable is coded uh, binary, like 0 and 1. Event did not happen or it did happen. Okay, so that motivates the use for logistic regression. Okay, so let's go back now. I'm going to kind of fit the... I'm uh, going to regress uh, survived on age first and then we're going to interpret the coefficient. Okay, we're going to fit a logistic regression of survived on age and do an interpretation of the coefficient on age. So to run it, we go analyze regression we go to binary, logistic binary, because your dependent variable has one of two outcomes, as opposed to multinomial logistic, where the DV has more than two outcomes. Okay, binary logistic. Now, what we do is transfer into the dependent variable box survived. And we transfer into the covariance box, which is another word for IV age. And then we just press click enter. OK. Now, compared to standard regression, for logistic regression there's a heck of a lot more output. 
So that's why I'm going to just focus on interpretation here because at the end of the day we either use the model for prediction or for interpreting the coefficients. We're going to interpret the coefficients. So we go, what well, a lot of, of stuff coming out of this. We are looking, let's zoom in on what we're actually interested in. This is what we're interested in. Variables in the equation. Now, age is the I, IV, and that's the coefficient, minus 0 0.005. And the exponential of that coefficient is 0 0.995. Now, this is the one we want. Okay. In logistic, for the interpretation, we go to the exponential of the coefficient. That just means we take, if you use the calculator, exponential of this figure here, e to, to this will give you 0.995. Okay, so we're going to interpret this coefficient on age 0.995, which is the exponential of the coefficient. Now, this takes us on to the jargon of odds and odds ratio, and there are many ways to write down explain what this point 0.995 is telling us, so I've just listed them. We could say the odds of surviving is lower for an older person. This is equivalent to saying it implies that the probability of surviving is lower for an older person. We could also say for that, but this first statement is very gen is uh, doesn't take account of the actual number, just whether the number is bigger than or less than one. Uh, next one, for an additional year of in age, the odds of surviving is lower by a factor of 0.995. Another way of saying it is, for an additional year in age, the odds of surviving is lower by half a percent. So that's expressing that this same, this is a second statement in terms of a percent. How do we turn it into a percent? Take that figure, the exponential of the coefficient, times by 100, subtract 100. Okay, another way of to explain the coefficient is the odds ratio is 0 0.995 for additional year of age. So here I've used kind of new jargon here, odds, odds ratio. Now, we are more probably we are more comfortable talking about probabilities than in odds. So let's take this odds ratio and explain what it means in terms of probability. The odds ratio, looking at three cases, it's either equal to 1, bigger than 1, less than 1. If it's equal to 1, it tell, we interpret it as saying that the probability of the event occurring, in this case that you survive on the Titanic, between the two situations are the same. Uh, so if we're looking at uh, the co covariate age here, it means that, well, that's what I mean by the two situations, it means whether you are at the original age or if you are an additional year older. So this is saying if that odds came to 1 then the ch probability of surviving is the same uh, whether you are age X or if you are older by one year than age X. If the odds ratio is bigger than 1 in terms of probability that says that probability of the event occurring with unit increase in the IV is higher than the original value of the IV. So in this context it would mean that if my odds ratio for age is bigger than 1 then the probability of surviving on the Titanic increases with age. Finally, odds ratio less than 1 in terms of probability it means that the probability of the event occurring with unit increase in IV is lower than the original IV. So the probability in this context, the probability of surviving on the Titanic will um, will fall okay, with age. So in this case the odds ratio is 0.995 so we can actually see that it's gonna with age the chances of surviving falls. How much does it fall by? It falls by, compared to 
person who is one year younger, your chances of surviving um, is lower by half a percent. Uh, I'll repeat that again because I don't know. That your odds of surviving is lower by half a percent. We can't say that the probability of surviving is lower than half a percent. Note that. So odds and probability are different things. So the best way to get around this is just read through each of the statements which are all kind of saying, the, saying something about the coefficient and try and understand it and then apply it to your model. So to summarize, for a dependent variable which has one of two outcomes, um, standard regression, although applicable, has several disadvantages compared to the logistic regression, which is designed specifically for dealing with dependent variables which have one of two outcomes. The coefficients, uh, in terms of interpreting the coefficients, we look at the exponential of the coefficient on the uh, IV, and then we can interpret in terms of odds or odds ratio. Finally, just to say that a model that is similar to the logistic is the probit, which we will f you will find in SPSS as well. Analyze linear regression, binary logistic. Sorry, I mean analyze regression, probit. They moved it down here. So binary logistic and probit, basically they are designed to handle dependent variables which have one of two outcomes. The interpretation for the probit model, the coefficient of the probit model is different to the logistic model. Uh, which one you use, it doesn't really matter. It depends on what field of application, your subject area that you're dealing with. You see some in some um, subject areas, they prefer one mold to another. For example, in economics, in econometrics, they tend to use the probit, whereas in something like psychology, they tend to use the logistic. Okay, that's uh, all for now.